Hello everyone, it's Louise here. How are you today? I'm just going to quickly pop on to make sure I am live at the moment. Yes, I am beautiful. Um, if you are joining me, please let me know where you're coming from. Please say hello. If you're watching the replay, please put hashtag replay. And if you have any questions or any comments along the way, please pop them in the comment box. Um, and I'll come back and check them a bit later on. Uh, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about four steps to creating um, or influencing social change. This is something that a lot of people I work with are constantly asking, like, how do I actually do this? I want to create this change. I want to support an inclusive world and um, create inclusive spaces, but how do I actually do the thing? So step number one that you need to do is you need to assess your privilege. Now, privilege is not a bad thing. Privilege is a wonderful thing to have, especially if you're using privilege to help uh, minority groups or people who are underprivileged in some way. You're supporting them in some way in their advancement um, to create more equality or more inclusion for them. So if you look at your own privilege and really start to look at, okay, where are the spaces that I occupy where I actually have some form of influence or power or input or somewhere where my say will be taken seriously, uh, you can start looking at that. The next step you can do from that is then uh, looking at where to focus your energy. So this is step number two. Where are you going to focus your energy based on your privilege assessment you just did? Because there is no point at all in us uh, wanting to be allies in spaces where our voice isn't going to be heard. Where, hi, is that Cindy? Hello. Lovely to see you. So it's no point in us saying, okay, well, we're really passionate. We want to change this particular thing or we want to create more inclusion or more equality in this certain space. Yet our voice is not going to be heard in that space. We don't have power or influence in that space at all. We are just, um, uh, I guess, giving energy that's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be hitting a wall constantly. So we need to be really mindful of where we're putting our energy and whether that energy we use is actually going to have an impact, is going to be heard, is going to be respected, and will it create some kind of ripple of inclusion where people will consider what you are saying, your input, and will it actually encourage social change in some way? Um, so that is step number two, really look at where you want to put your energy and make sure it's based on your privilege assessment uh, to make sure that when you are giving your energy and your time to this, it will be heard and listened to. Okay, step number three. Now you've, you've assessed your privilege um, and you know where you can influence, you know the one space that you want to influence or one thing you want to change and you are willing and open to put your energy into that one thing, then what we're going to do is we are going to go to those marginalized groups or underrepresented groups who are, are oppressed in that particular space, who aren't being... Um, being seen, who aren't heard, who aren't sitting at those tables, who aren't invited into those conversations. You are then to go to those people who aren't being present in those spaces and ask them the question, how can I support you in this? What do you need me to do to support you in this space or to create this change or to influence or have some kind of impact? What do you require of me? Then you're going to really listen to what they're saying and learn and take it all in. And then we can work out how exactly you can create some kind of influence in that social change. Now, this is a really good point um, to bring up with this as well, is that not all people who are belong to marginalized groups are experts in inclusion and diversity. So going to them uh, is a really great way of one, starting a relationship and starting the conversation with them about what they want. Um, 
but also recognizing that they have lived experiences in that thing, but they may not be experts in inclusion and diversity. So it's important to listen to those people, but also find a mentor or a coach or um, a leader in the space of inclusion and diversity to then mold together uh, what you can do as an individual in this space. Um, and I am uh, a coach for inclusion and diversity, so you can work with me. There are, a, there are other people you can work with, but it just depends on who aligns with you the most. Now, the fourth thing you need to do after, after you have assessed your privilege and worked out where you can influence, you have decided something you are, you really want to change, you don't like, you don't agree with, and you feel quite um, drawn to or passionate about creating that change in that space, you have talked to those marginalized people who are being directly affected by the thing you want to change or are being oppressed in some way in that space, you are talking to them, you are asking them how you can support them in this. Whether they even want it or not is another question. So you are really talking with them, building the relationships and asking the question of what you can do to support them. You're also in this, in step three, you're also looking for a mentor or a coach to help you navigate this. Someone who is, um, well-versed or an expert in inclusion and diversity who can help you navigate the next steps and unpacking some of the stuff that you may have around this as well. And then number four, you're going to take action. Now, without this action, you you can't be an ally. You, um, it's, you know, it's really lovely to have intentions and, and wanting to create change, but the truth of our world is our thoughts alone don't change it. You know, we have to actually be taking the action as well. The actions will be other things that create those ripple effects um, in the world and inspire and influence those changes. So that is those four steps. So I'll just run through them quickly again. So the first one is to assess your privilege to work out where you can influence and can't influence spaces, where you have power and where you don't have power. The second one is to decide where you're going to put your energy. Where are you going to put your activism and what is the thing that, what's the outcome you want to have or outcome you want to create? The third thing you need to do is really go to those marge people who are being directly affected by that particular oppressive system or those people who are being affected directly by the things you want to change and listen to them. Ask them, how can I support you through this? What can I do to support you in this? Is this something you even want to have changed at all? Asking the questions, being really curious and respectful of them and their time. Uh, and in this third space, you also want to be looking for a mentor, someone who has volunteered to be a, um, a guide or a mentor or a coach in the inclusion and diversity space. Someone who um, understands psychology, social change, someone who understands human behavior and also um, the little bits and pieces of culture that will make a difference and have a greater impact uh, in terms of your activism or if you're wanting to create that social change. And then step four is the action part. Make sure you are willing to do the action to follow up um, and not show up as this tokenistic or performative way where it's seeming like you're wanting to do some, you have that intention, you have that thought, but then you're not following through with it. We need that follow through to happen to actually make the changes happen. I hope this has been um, helpful to you. If you have any questions at all, please pop them in the link. You can all, you're also very welcome to message me directly if you have any other questions. 
Um, like I said throughout the video, I am an inclusion diversity coach, consultant and course creator. So I am one of those people you can approach and um, have as a mentor to help you navigate through your allyship um, and creating a more inclusive world. So that is all from me for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Much love to you and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.